Hey everybody, Carl here, coming to you from Golden, Colorado. That's my hometown, a little bit west of Denver, just east of the mountains, right up against the mountains. Wait, enough about me, let's talk about gear. So this is going to be my gear picks for all kinds of different situations and weather conditions. We are gonna start off today with the most simple setup, super light and fast. And this is just your basic little fanny pack. I really love it if you've got the water bottle holders. One of them's gonna hold a rain jacket, one of them's gonna hold water bottle. Definitely smart to put a water filter in here if you're only carrying one water bottle. And then you've got all kinds of room for food. You can get your phone in here as well. I got some in here right now. I think, yeah, it's the filter. You know, so I've got my filter and unlimited supply of water, assuming there is a water supply on my route. But uh, this is a fantastic way to go. Warm summer adventures, where maybe you just wear a lightweight hoodie like this that actually keeps you pretty warm, especially if it's underneath a shell. And, uh, and then you're able to move fast and light and have an incredible time. You also stay a lot cooler because with a fanny pack, you're not sweating on your back, so on and so forth. I use this myself a lot for mountain biking. I would use it a lot more mountaineering, especially for those kind of shorter trips, say, you know, under eight miles. And, uh, and I don't just because I'm carrying a lot of camera equipment. So that's the only reason you really haven't seen it, but it is an excellent tool and the lightest weight tool for your shorter summer trips. Now that said, I already did mention a lightweight hoodie is awesome. Also kind of gives you a little bit of warmth around your ears if you need it. I always recommend wearing a hat. Obviously this is my super classic hat that I always wear. Not necessarily needed this, but it is also waterproof. So it keeps a lot of rain off with this big brim. Keeps the intense sun rays off when I'm really at high altitude. Maybe a different color would be better for the desert, but uh, you know, usually I only do that in the winter time. So on the bottoms, a lot of times I like to wear some kind of a compression shorts or pants, usually just as underwear underneath pants or shorts. I do not wear shorts anymore. After my last trip to the desert, um, just got scratched to the dickens. And if I'm not in the desert, then it's probably cooler because I'm at high altitude and that means I wanna wear pants anyway. I've been using these Stretch Zion Piranha pants. This pair has lasted me two and a half years now. Uh, you see it in every other video I make. Um, they're the same pants. They've lasted forever. So a lot of good things to say about these. Super durable. You can roll them up. Fairly lightweight. Well, also warm too. So that has been my go-to pants. And I think that just about covers the summer wear. And then one of my favorite little items that we're going to get into is shoes. And for your easiest, lightest weight of ventures, I definitely recommend, you know, this is the ideal shoe, I think. One of the running shoes from the Sportiva line, it's still got sticky rubber. Um, they are kind of expensive, so that's been painful. You, you don't necessarily have to do that. I shop at Sierra Trading Post quite a bit. Last year I found these, they were the Dynafits. Actually, I think they're even a little bit lighter. And another cool thing I really like about them is you can see right here, they've got this climbing toe, which is just a flat edge to give you the maximum contact area when you're using smaller footholds. And that adds quite a bit of security, surprisingly large amount of security when, uh, when you're doing more scrambling. So uh, these actually have been a great shoe and have lasted pretty darn well. And we're half the price of the Sportivas. So, other things for summer, even in the summer, if you're getting an early start, super light gloves are a great addition. Um, you never know how it's going to go. And in the morning, you know, especially if you're starting before dawn, super light gloves, great. I always recommend carrying a buff. It's super versatile. I generally, you know, put it on my head in the morning. If it gets windy, even if it's really not that cold, sometimes just having this over your ears to block the wind. It's just way more comfortable, um, really nice. Fits easily under the hat. You've probably seen me wear it a hundred times. So uh, I always carry this buff. It's just so easy to put in your pocket. And oh, hey buddy, um, oh boy. So uh, it's also a good strategy piece. When you're doing hiking, and we'll start talking about strategy and gear, it's really crucial to try to maintain a proper temperature, basically a low temperature. You never want to be overheating. 
you are going to go through your water three times as fast, you're going to be all sweaty and wet, and then it's going to be harder to control the temperature that you're operating in if you get all sweaty. So this is a really easy thing to take on and pull off and you know whatever you need to do that's quick and easy. You don't have to take off your backpack in order to start regulating that temperature. So we'll talk about that more as we go, but as long as you stay the right temperature, you're going to be carrying, wow, woo, Rodney just took a digger. Um, you're going to be carrying way less water and carrying less water is carrying less weight. So I, I think it's huge, very instrumental in order to maintain that proper temperature. So speaking of temperatures, even in the summer when I'm doing the high altitude peaks, this is my go-to jacket and I just love this jacket. It is windproof, water resistant, stretch, soft shell. It's an Under Armour Storm line. And I, I honestly couldn't even find it, but I'm gonna show you the attributes that I really love on this jacket. And then I recommend looking for the attributes that I tell you about that you'd like, and then, uh, and then find something similar. Is it, it breathes really well. It's got this kind of baffled back and behind the arm, so it dissipates sweat super efficiently with all this surface area. And then uh, again, hood. I always go for the hood. I love the hood. If you don't want it, no problem. Just flip it out of the way. Um, there's really never a bad time to have a hood. And you know, it gets really windy and cold makes a huge difference. Again, like the buff, it's a great way to maintain your body temperature without a whole lot of messing around. So that is fantastic. I love this jacket. Other features that I think are really awesome, giant inside pockets. A lot of times when I'm training, I'll just take this jacket and I can put a water bottle right in here. And as long as I'm wearing a warm shirt, I can be well in the sub-freezing temperatures. Water bottle's still not gonna freeze. I still have something to drink. So that is super handy. I really enjoy a chest pocket, although I did recently have a tragedy with the chest pocket where the phone fell out of the chest pocket because I didn't zip it up all the way. So really my fault. Chest pocket, awesome, easy access, really good. And then with your pockets, assuming you're wearing a pack with a waist belt, you want the pockets just a little bit higher. Otherwise that waist belt is always in the way of your pockets. And again, for me, pockets are key. I, I'm shooting film while I'm doing all this, so you know, putting little things here and there or just extra gloves or the buff or whatever. I love having extra pockets and they're always good. So that's, that's my strategy and what I do to try to keep it fast and light and still stay comfortable because comfortable is also key. You're not having a good time. You're not performing your best when you're preoccupied with how uncomfortable you are. So that is huge. Speaking of uncomfortable, we'll just bring this up right now. If you are doing technical climbing, there's all kinds of performance shoes out there that are incredible. Um, I perform by far my best with a climbing shoe that just fits perfectly and is comfortable. And that way I'm just thinking about climbing and I am not thinking about how much my big toe hurts. So I do another Sportiva brand. I am not a Sportiva fanboy really, but uh, their products often really work for me. This is the Mythos. I love them. They fit like a glove on, on my feet. I think different feet actually uh, take different shoes. So keep that in mind. I think we've covered all the shoes. The last one I'm really excited about for Christmas, my wife got me the TX4 Sportivas. So these are kind of like their heavier approach shoes. Again, they've got this climbing edge. So you've got maximum friction on small footholds. It is critical to have a big ran not only for jamming your feet into cracks and being able to stick, but I destroy shoes super fast, like super fast. So hopefully these hold up better than my other ones. I don't really think they're, they will. Um, this is another shoe that I've, I've been wearing a lot. It's a Garmon. I got them for half the price. They have been fantastic. I've been able to climb really well in them. Uh, so I, I just love, I love these, but this area just gets destroyed and I'm pretty sure it's from sticking my feet in cracks, twisting, also just sliding into sharper rocks, you know, stuff like that. So depending on how aggressive you are, you'll be going through shoes. So you might want to do some bargain shopping. I like Sierra Trading Post. You got to keep looking though. The, they're getting tougher and tougher to find good deals, but, but they still have them. So these are the lightweight summer shoes that I would recommend for that. I think we've just about covered all the summer stuff. 
there are a lot of things that I try to get inexpensively, like oh, shoes that are pretty good but on sale, or gloves aren't that big a deal. They're kind of all the same, you know, as long as they're windproof, at least I think. There's a couple items I don't skip on at all, and the biggest one is sunglasses. I think protecting your eyes is vital, and not only protecting your eyes, but giving you the ability to see and see well. When you're moving quickly through rough talus or tough terrain in any kind of situation, you need to be able to see, and you need to be able to see well so you can react properly. And these have been phenomenal. These are jewel boat explorer tubes, and uh, they've been phenomenal. These are also the photochromatic ones. I didn't get the snow super dark ones. I got kind of the regular photochromatics, and they were expensive. I will say that, and it's been money well spent. The moment I put them on, I was really surprised at the clarity and the contrast. So I could just see phenomenally well. Keeping the wind off your eyes is also just way more comfortable and uh, again, allowing you to see better. If you're getting all tearied up because you're in 60 mile an hour winds, it makes it tougher. So I do recommend spending the money on glasses because that is important. Name brand shoes, I think that's also somewhat important because if they fail, you're, you're really in deep shit. Here's another one, all season, super awesome. You do not necessarily need to get a three piece pole. I thought you did, I kind of got sold on it. Not necessary. Carbon fiber, not necessary either. I do think the adjustable length is fairly important. Um, they are, <coughs> excuse me, they are easy to put together. And then you just got this last little tab so you can get exactly the length you want. And I do recommend super light. So now we're getting into just a little bit of a heavier situation, a bigger day. Maybe you need to start carrying some more gear. Maybe still summer though. But this is a pack I found on Amazon and I'll put a picture up to show you the brand. But for the money, this thing has been unbelievable. And I have started using it in training. It's been surprisingly good for 30 bucks. And they'll probably raise that price. But I stuck this pole in here just to show you, you know, it's got the zippers on top and yeah, it might not be as pretty, but you can always just do one of these slightly less expensive poles and just stick them in here like this you know, and just make sure they're not going to go flying out. So I've done that a few times when I forgot my three sections and borrowed poles and stuff. And this works fine too. And in a way these might even be better because if you just have a little bit of snow to deal with, you can deal with this a lot better than you can a full length pole. If you just need to, you know, squeak by on something or take a little shortcut and you know, you can use this better than a full length pole. And it's also a full length pole and they're cheaper. So, I'm not totally against this anymore. I used to think I needed to fit it all in my pack, but you really don't. So, so this kind of pole works. I would get ultra light. It does save a ton of energy. And again, once the train starts getting rough at all, or even just steep, even the best ultra runners in the world are all now using poles when they're going straight up steep trails. It, it adds a lot more strength to your stride and a lot more traction as well. So I'll never go back. I love using the poles. Um, I'll do another video on that and all the essentials to using them efficiently and really improving your overall efficiency. Uh, flat ground, they're not so useful. Uh, but again, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough, the poles are phenomenal. I would definitely get poles. You will break your poles. If you don't let go of your pole when it gets stuck in a crack, you're gonna snap in half. I don't care if they're strong poles or weak poles, but the amount of leverage you're gonna break your pole. So you've gotta let go, you've gotta get off of it if, you, if it gets stuck or any pole will break. Um, so maybe don't spend a ton, but uh, if you get two of the same pair of poles, which is what I ended up doing, that's a great move. Cause I did, I did break a pole on a Pacific Peak climb, not that long ago, a couple months ago with Spencer. And uh, I bought the same pair of poles again and then I just used one of the new poles so I can afford to break another pole and I still have a good pair of poles. So that, that's a pretty cool strategy because you probably will break a pole. All right, so let's get a little bit more into this pack. This, this has been a really cool pack. So right now I just set it up with the rain fly so it wouldn't take forever, um, but it's got a built-in rain fly and you just kind of Velcro that to the shoulder straps up here. Very good. And then on the bottom, you just hook it around your uh, waist belt. And it, and it was good coverage. I was surprised. I didn't really think it was gonna work that well, but it did. So pretty stoked with the rain cover, especially if I'm gonna stick a drone in there or something. That is really nice. 
And then other features, way cool again, 30 bucks, insane. Um, so it's already got this helmet little net all set up, which is just kick ass. Uh, helmets are annoying, flopping around helmets drive me crazy while I'm trying to hop around through boulders or something. Having this little net, really cool and really easy to use. And it really doesn't obstruct, actually doesn't at all obstruct your access to the pack. So again, awesome. Um, you know, and then like here's a super lightweight vest. That might be something that, you know, you want to take when it's freezing in the morning and you're actually wearing it. And you got your cool pack. It does have, it came with a bladder, again, for 30 bucks. Phenomenal. Um, and then it also has some little storage pockets in here. And uh, we'll talk about that because I, I love storage pockets and I'll tell you a few reasons I really like them. But first we'll, uh, we'll get the helmet out of the way. You know, any certified helmet is good. Definitely for class three and up, I would be wearing a helmet. Rock fall is something you're not gonna be able to control. And if it hits you in the head while you're climbing class three, not only are you gonna get whacked in the head, but you're gonna probably have a long ride down right after that. So I would definitely be carrying a helmet. Really works great for a helmet cam too, if you're into that kind of thing. I happen to be. Um, so helmet there, I, I, lightweight is good. That's about all I'll say about that. So this is, also just stows right in its own little storage dealio right here. So really, again, neat pack that I'm excited about. And then it's got your outside stuff too. Oh, I just want to stick my jacket on and not mess around. Boom, right there. Oh, and my apples right here in the, totally easy. These water bottle pockets are awesome too. They're exactly the right size. This is a little too small of a smart water bottle. This is, I think, the 20 ounce. I would definitely get the liter size. That's pretty much the standard for through hikers is a liter. And that'll still fit right in here like this. And then uh, you've got your water bottle, boom, super easy. The only thing I was in love with is I couldn't get the water bottle out by myself wearing the pack. But if you release one shoulder, you can just swing it around, you got your water bottle. And then, uh, this also will make right up with your Sawyer Squeeze. This is the Mini. I find the Mini fine. They say the Sawyer Squeeze flows a little bit quicker. So, you know, if you're in a group especially and just carrying one, maybe the, the Squeeze is for you. I'm rolling with the Mini. Then you just attach it. Well, here, I'll show you this because I think this is even better and cheaper and more versatile too. Is you just screw right on here and then you can just squeeze the water. So I wouldn't want to really use a 20 ounce bottle the reason is that's not enough water to fill much. Usually I'm carrying a, a bike bottle that's 24 ounces. This isn't even gonna fill one bottle. That's kind of annoying. Um, so go with the one liter. And then the other cool thing, if you're doing the one liter and you have a 24 ounce bottle, you can squeeze your one liter and yeah, there'll still be some left over, but your other bottle's full. And then you can just drink from this too. You know, just because this is the clean end, boom, bam. We got that going on as well. So that's fantastic. And then uh, occasionally I've screwed up with my water or forgot the second water bottle or maybe left a second water bottle on my bike. Another just super awesome trick is just fill up your dirty water wherever, you know, and just carry that. And then uh, you've got your second water bottle. And then just filtering it either way into your go-to clean water bottle. The one thing you don't want to do is make a mistake and start drinking out of your smart water bottle that's had water in it. I, I really don't worry too much in the mountains about getting sick from the water. I still always filter because why not? If there's something dead upstream, you're going to get sick and that's going to be bad. If you're in the desert or something and like you're at a cistern or water tank and yeah, there's some dead rat floating around in there, holy yeah, you definitely want to get your water filter going on then. So awesome system. And I think we have pretty much covered the lightweight stuff. Well, the last thing I will mention is with this pack as well, awesome front pouches. You got your phone. Oh, I want to snap some pictures or video. Super easy. Oh, I got my little snacky bar. Oh, it's right here. I don't even have to stop or mess around. It's got that bladder pouch or water bottle holder. So you're totally good on that too. Um, just, it makes it easy to just keep moving fast and light. There, there were a couple things I didn't like about this thing. It did come with this big frame metal thing. I just pulled it out. It made a big gap back here so you wouldn't sweat. Um, it was heavy, I didn't like it. And then it had a bunch of buckles on the front and I took off all the buckles and I just modified it with these just super simple shock cords, stretchy shock cords for my chest. 
Um, so whether you do that or not is up to you, but it, it dropped a lot of weight and I like the stretchy too, cause you can breathe better. So phenomenal deal. Again, I have been training with this already, running around with like 20 pounds in the back, just running uphill. So I think that about covers the lightweight stuff. And uh, next we're gonna get into shoulder season and winter.